Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in His Word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. When something's important and we want to make sure someone else gets it, we know we have to repeat it, especially when we're teaching. I don't know how many times I've heard I before E except after C from my spelling teachers, or don't forget to brush your teeth from my parents. And I know my kids heard me remind them to say please a lot. But many other concepts needed repetition to sink deeply into my children's hearts and minds. Like, your relationship with your sibling is much more important than that toy. Or, spending time in the Word of God every day is absolutely essential. As a mother, I had 17 or 18 years to teach them everything that's important in life. That's a huge responsibility if you think about it. John the Baptist had a huge responsibility too. John 1, 6 and 7 spells out his main mission. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was to get people ready for the Messiah and point him out when he came. So he used repetition. He preached the same sermon over and over. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But something he also said, we read first in John 1.15. He spoke about Jesus to everyone who would listen. He said, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. It's obvious that he said this many times before. It was something that should have stuck with people that he taught because he kept saying it. Three times in John 1, he said almost exactly the same thing. This is the one. You know, the man I keep telling you about, the Messiah, the one we've all been waiting for. And what does he say about Jesus? He said, he's the one who comes after me. Like in sequential order, John the Baptist came first. He was about six months older than Jesus. And he began his ministry before Jesus showed up publicly. So Jesus technically came after him in sequential order. John was the forerunner of Christ, like a herald that precedes a king, announcing that the king would be coming so that people could have time to get ready. John said that Jesus was preferred before me, meaning he had a much higher position, a greater rank. No one would mistake a lowly herald for a king, right? And John knows his place in the plan of God. Over and over, we see how humble he is as he points to Jesus, then stands back and recedes into the background. The disciples argue about who's the greatest, but John the Baptist had no difficulty with his perspective on that. It's Jesus. He's just a peon. Jesus is the king. In fact, when John spoke with the representatives of the Pharisees who came to figure out who he was, He used these words to redirect the conversation toward Jesus. And he added, This is he whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. Now back then, students of a rabbi were above taking off the rabbi's sandals and washing his feet. Only the lowliest of servants did this task. Remember how none of the disciples at the Passover wanted to stoop themselves to that level? And then Jesus modeled true servant leadership by washing their feet. John says that he isn't even worthy to be Jesus' lowest ranking servant. How's that for humility? And he says, Jesus was before me. Now in our limited way of thinking, a person can either come before or after someone, not both. That would be a contradiction. But like many things in the Bible that seem to be contradictions, they're really caused by the limits of our mind. Jesus may have been born after John the Baptist and started his ministry after him, but he existed from the very beginning, and even before that, he's eternal. Now just as important as what John the Baptist said was how he said it. In John 1.15 it says that John bore witness of him and cried out. The Greek word used there is an onomatopoeia, 
And for you non-English majors out there, that's a word written like a sound, like crash or bang or meow. The word sounds like the sound. This word is supposed to be like the cry of a raven. So think loud, repetitive, forceful, continuous. Not that we need to be loud, repetitive, forceful, and continuous, but we need to be about the business of humbly and continually talking about our Savior and introducing Him to people, deflecting praise from ourselves and reflecting our Lord. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through His Word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.